Hey everybody, it's Nikki and I'm here to do part three um, of my no medical advice. I think I forgot to say that last time, um, but I'm not giving anything that even resembles medical advice. Um, part three of my 670G T-Slim comparison um, and I'm making good time, <laughs> so I'm really excited. Um, okay, I'm talking about calibrations and accuracy. I talked about delivery in the last one and, and uh, alerts, physical pump, um, and now I'm on calibrations and accuracy. Um, G6 T Slim is hands down my favorite combo. I should have said about the, um, and I think I did, but I should have said about the 670G Scream. I think the 670G G Scream is definitely my favorite of the two. Um, neither one of them, I, I like the belt clip. Um, delivery options T Slim really is um, my favorite of the two. Um, and now when it comes to calibrating and accuracy, T-Slim is my favorite of the two. Um, can't beat no calibrations needed. Um, and that is what, that's what you get with the, with the Dexcom G6. It's good for 10 days. There's a potential to extend it. Um, it's really accurate. And there is some part of me that thinks, and my friend Joanne, um, has, has said that she's seen the same thing. That at some point, like as you as you go beyond the ten days, that it almost picks up in accuracy. It almost it almost gets even stronger, um, and all the while you don't need to calibrate. It doesn't mean that you can't calibrate. You always have the option to, um, but it's truly, truly up to your discretion. Um, I don't think, and I don't want to be quoted on this, but I don't think that there's ever an instance where you absolutely have to calibrate. Um, and this is what I was told, is that even when the pump has sent you a notification that it's requiring you to calibrate, it's still up to you. And in one case, I had received the notification. I didn't know that I had a choice in it. I just didn't have a meter. And so I hadn't gotten to it yet. And by the time I came back with my meter, um, it had cleared itself. So I was like, okay, so that actually is, you know, supports what I had heard. Um, so I don't believe, and, and the other thing I'd heard, and this was true, I did see this, was that no, a lack of calibration, even upon request, does not knock out your basal IQ um, performance or your basal IQ function. Um, so that's huge. I mean, it's just, it's just this really nice thing. It's kind of like, okay, um, it's probably asking me for a calibration because either, you know, the sensor is getting ready to fall apart or my blood sugar is doing something. I mean, it's probably asking for a good reason. Um but I can determine when it is the best time to give that calibration. And if now is not the best time, there's no penalty for it. Um, if I determine later on in four hours that this is a great time, then it's okay. And all the while my pump continues um, to be able to do all the same functions um, that it could without the calibration. Um, the 670G, that's not true. Uh, in fact, guaranteed, even in manual mode, you need two calibrations per day um, is if you, if you are late for a calibration, you can set your you can set your alert right so you so you know within an hour of calibration being due. Um, if you are late, then you lose your sensor value. Um, as soon as you lose your sensor value, you're going to lose anything that's associated with that. You're going to lose your suspends. Um, you're going to lose a smart guard. Uh, you're going to lose auto mode. I mean, it depends on whatever it is that's based on that, but it cannot continue. Well, it's going to put you in safe basal, for, if we're going to be technically speaking, it's going to put you in safe basal first, which is a reduced amount of insulin, um, and then you're going to lose your features. So any way you cut it, for me, because I just want to keep getting my insulin, it's not an ideal scenario. Um, and this is because I just haven't given my pump a number yet. Um, that's in manual mode. That's where there really aren't very many requirements. There's not very many alerts. It's, it's, a, it's a very manageable mode. There are still two calibrations there. But when you get over, get over into auto mode, it's a whole nother story. Um, and it can get pretty crazy in auto mode. The old transmitter used to be much, much worse. And I do think that they fixed a lot with this new updated transmitter. Um, but it's still problematic. And it still requires a whole lot of BGs. Um, I posted to my group the other day, and it was a long post. And I heard back from few people as to whether or not they were seeing this. So I'm unclear, but I also can't really believe that I'm unique in this. Um, and what I think has happened is I think that part of the fix for the old transmitter is that they have put something in the new transmitter that is, is triggered when you have a rapidly changing blood sugar or like a, or, or like a change in your blood sugar. So let's say I'm, I'm going up and now all of a sudden I'm going down um, or I'm starting to kind of gain momentum. 
I think it triggers something, and I think that that triggers that BG required notification. The old transmitter, that was like, you know, that was rage material, right? Because you, no matter what number you put in, you either had to calculate it um, with some crazy calculations, or you had to really be subject to a lot of sensor failures, um, you know, whatever. It was the loop, okay? So um, this has been a big improvement because now it says BG required, and it accepts your BG, and that's really, really nice. But in my case, because I do fluctuate throughout the day, it was like every time I fluctuated, it would ask for a BG. And every time I failed to respond, it would put me in safe basal. Every time I go to safe basal, I, I receive a reduced amount of insulin, which means that in one case, um, I mean, I think over 48 hours in auto mode, 16 times I received a reduced amount of insulin and it was not based on my blood sugar or my insulin needs. It was just based on the fact that my pump needed me to put in a number. Um, that's unacceptable to me. So that's so when you come to calibrations and kind of um, how high maintenance your pump is, for me, that's really, really high maintenance. That means I need to be paying attention at all times because I'm gonna be, because um, it, you know, I'm gonna. There's there's serious repercussions to not to not paying attention. Um, whereas with the G6, I can go days on end with you know I do lots of finger sticks anyway so I'm not saying I'm sitting there relying but I could really kind of rely on my sensor way more than I can um, with my Medtronic I'll leave it like that um, so that is calibrating um, accuracy um, the new transmitter the new 670G transmitter this is version 2.2 I do think that it is um, way more accurate I do think that it has cut the lag. I do think those are great things. Um, it's still kind of spotty. Like some days, some sensors have been good. Some sensors have not, have not been. Some sensors have felt very much like the old sensors. Um, uh, and I would like to say that even on its very best days, I don't think it outperforms my Dexcom, um, save for a few stray values. Like here and there, one of my Medtronic values will be um, just a better value than my, my Dexcom, but in general, um, and consistently and, you know, significantly my Dexcom performs better. And that is on the new transmitter. Um, I do wonder whether or not the new transmitter, um, whether or not auto mode would perform better for me with the new transmitter, being that it's cut the lag um, and that there's better accuracy. And my answer is, I think, yes, it probably would. However, I'll say that it wasn't just the lag that caused me not to like auto mode. It was really the algorithm um, and the transmitter doesn't do anything for that. Um, so that is that. I think I'll come back and do the other one. Thanks.